I know I've been going like full dive on shorts lately and everything, so it's probably a surprise when you're seeing this pop up in your subscription feed or anywhere on the home feed or anything. But we're back for My Hero Academia chapter 403 spoilers. And when you see what happens in this chapter, you'll you'll completely understand why I had to come back for this chapter. Because this chapter is absolute madness. So of course I want to say thank you to Rukasu, thank you to Dobby's pole dance. Let's get right into the spoilers of this honestly just really insane chapter of My Hero Academia. It's got me really excited to be reading again, so let's get to it. So the title of this chapter actually comes in two separate parts, with us first getting the end of an era. And according to Rukasu, the chapter actually begins with Kid All Might reading the Anpan Man manga, which is a real manga in our real world, with his mom, saying that his childhood was very normal. It's not even something that can be called a proper origin. But he he always looked back and saw that the path he chose was very important. And of course, this page is amazing to get because we actually get to see All Might's mom, right? Like when All Might is very young, we get to see what he's like. And this is our first time ever seeing All Might as a young child. But we get to see his mom here. And yeah, I mean, she kind of fits the bill of exactly what I would expect with really, really long blonde hair that looks very much like Toshinori's, right? Like that kind of flat hair that All Might has. She has the same thing. And we see them in a simple room. You know, it looks like she has a little ironing board, maybe ironing her clothes or his father's clothes. We don't see anything about All Might's father at all in this chapter, and I, I doubt that's something that we're ever gonna see in the manga, right? Like, at this point, I don't think we're gonna see anything about his dad, but we do see that All Might did sort of live in, like, times that were kind of just like our times to a certain extent, or at least the times that we have grown up in, and I think that's interesting, considering the fact that, like, at some point in My Hero, they definitely got a little futuristic, and we know that All Might is a lot older than a lot of the other people in the cast, so it's nice to see what society was like when he was born. Rukasu continues to say that it cuts back to the present and All for One is laughing, saying that All Might won't get to choose how he dies. And it's at this point where we learn that he destroyed the gauntlets that All Might was using, using his spike squirk before they exploded. So on the page, we see All for One with a really, really big smile on his face, kind of like a twisted grin. And we see that the gauntlets that All Might was literally just about to use to take himself out, we saw the explosion kind of happening at the end of last chapter. Those are no longer working because there are massive spikes kind of tearing right through them. And I guess that also means that those spikes are tearing through All Might's arm itself because they're they're coming out of All for One's body, right? So they're going right through All for One's shoulder, I guess, where they're spawning through All Might's arm and destroying the gauntlet that he was about to use to blow both of them up. And a very crucial detail that might be missed in this chapter is that means that All for One did not get rewinded, right? Like All Might's big strategy here to kind of nerf All for One was to rewind him to the point where he was maybe a kindergartner. But now we see that All for One is not going to actually be rewinded in this instance. And he's kind of the same age as the UA students, which I think is going to be really important as this fight kind of moves forward because I feel like it's just going to be really good for the symbolism and it provides a proper villain for one of the characters that we're going to be seeing in a second here. What we see after this is All for One actually growing a brain and being a smart villain for one of the first times in this entire scenario. And he actually uses Stain's quirk on All Might. And I like the fact that like as he uses Stain's quirk, it gives him like a really long and nasty tongue. And even at one point we see All for One smile kind of like crack and become this big sort of like Cheshire cat grin. Like it's just big, like almost like Joker from the Batman, right? Where if he didn't have those scars, is where it would be big. It's disgusting. It's horrifying. But I really like seeing how all for one's quirks when he uses different ones, they all kind of change his body in various different ways. But he's just kind of rewinding through all of it, right? So it's like it all kind of just goes back to normal at the end of the day. So as all for one licks one of his hands that has a lot of All Might's blood on it, since he's holding him floating in the air, of course he uses Stain's quirk and that completely immobilizes All Might. And luckily for All Might, he actually has A type blood. And we know that Stain has like a tier list of different kind of bloods that he can affect with his quirk. So we know that it starts with O, A, A, B, and B, with B being the most affected and O being the least affected. So, I mean, All Might kind of lucked out in this instance because if he is saved or anything happens to him here, he will be able to move almost as quick as like the fastest person who would be able to move, right, in this scenario. So at least he's not completely locked down like he would be for 10 minutes if he had B-type blood. It's at this point where All For One tells All Might that he knows wounded heroes are dangerous, so he didn't let his guard down in this scenario, knowing that All Might was gonna try doing something. And All Might's just kind of of frozen there with a horrified look on his face, realizing that in this situation, while All for One has his hands around his neck, he's actually completely helpless. On the next page, we get a situation update with what's happening with UA, and Rukasu tells us that now that UA is floating, Gentle wants to go and help All Might against All for One. But at that same moment, All for One being very, very calculating and realizing exactly what's going on, or maybe just having some sort of hearing quirk, honestly, that lets him hear what everyone is planning on the battlefield, shoots a laser beam from one of his eyes and actually looks really cool as we see like smoke or light coming off one of his eyeballs. And as he shoots this kind of like electric bolt of like a laser beam, sort of like Dio's eye powers in Jojo, this hits UA right in the center and causes something to explode.
but I guess forcing Gentle to stay there holding up the school. As I'm sure that everyone inside UA feels like a massive kind of shift in the balance, and I'm wondering like if anyone crucial was in the path of where All for One was shooting, right? Like you would wonder if All for One has like some sort of x-ray quirk or something like that. Maybe you could actually see into UA and see where some of the crucial infrastructure is or, or where people are repairing it or something and shoot exactly through there. Because if that's the case, I mean, RIP to Momo and Hatsume and several other characters, but I don't think that we're going to be like unlucky enough to have that happen. So it's just a random kind of miscreant lightning bolt shot through UA that is going to effectively have it crashing down to the ground all over again. So hang in there, gentle. Now, at this point, we actually see the jet pilots that were friends with Star and Stripe. And if you remember, these characters were like her best friends, right? Like she grew up with these pilots. And I believe like maybe one of them lost their lives during the battle between Star and Stripe and Shigaraki. I don't think it was very many of them or any of them at all. But we know that they were very crucial in collecting battle information for the Shigaraki fight that's happening in this arc because they got all the information of everything that he was able to do in their black boxes and likely provided that to All Might for his suit to be made before the final arc. But here we learn that General Akpar is actually watching through a live stream direct feed from the jets. And as the jets sort of surround themselves in energy and sort of dive towards All for One, things don't really go all that well for them. Because as the pilots also try to help with their jets, saying that they won't let Star's idol die, All For One quickly destroys them all, literally as they're giving the command to fire. He just kind of swipes through them and destroys the jets entirely. And it's really brutal because he swipes through all three of them and they're just gone. Those guys are just dead. I mean, RIP, you're not going to see them again in the story, but it's very rare to see Horikoshi just like nonchalantly getting rid of characters who at some point had dialogue and were important, right? like not just some random background characters that's all the americans in japan right now i think they're just gone right those are the only ones and of course as we see those people falling down to the sky and seeing their jets all like blown apart and flaming and, and all the bits falling down to the ground beneath ua we see general agpar kind of sinking his head and despairing as he realizes that things are just really not going well here rukasu says that agpar feels hopeless and deku and Tsukauchi also start to freak out when all for one holds all might in his arm and that's actually what we see on the next page as you see people all over the world rooting for All Might because you got to remember this is being streamed to literally everywhere on earth and people are even just watching on their phones in America and everywhere. But as everyone is watching and you see people starting to get really, really worried, All For One literally picks All Might up with both of his hands and raises him over his head, looking like he's about to sacrifice All Might or do something really horrible. Kind of like when Bane picked up Batman and broke his back. It looks like a much more evil version of that. Like, you know, All For One is definitely thinking and here i go my coup de gras as he plans to just like rip all might in two halves right and one interesting thing we see of course here is melissa from the first my hero academia movie just once again reconfirming for anyone who's still wondering if those movies are canon that yes they are. As we watch All Might get lifted up into the air, we see that some people have even already given up in this scenario. And on the page, we can even see that Gran Torino was watching from his hospital room and crying. And again, because All Might is paralyzed here and he really can't do anything to help himself, he's making a really, really desperate face. And Deku doesn't know what to do because he's literally holding Shigaraki down using his black chain technique. And he looks up and he just sees this happening. And I mean, does he let go of Shigaraki who just threatened that he was going to go to UA and take care of everyone there? especially when he knows that Shigaraki could just one touch decay it and get rid of it entirely in like two seconds? Or does he just watch his master get torn apart? So it's in this moment where Deku or Tsukauchi or Deku and Tsukauchi start to pray, saying someone, please help All Might, someone. And what do we see when we turn the page, folks? We see none other than the reawakening of Katsuki Bakugo. As Yue is falling out of the sky once more with two big massive holes sticking on either end of it, we see a giant shining ray of light on the top of it as we see one soul figure standing on top of Yue as the smoke clears. And of course, like we just mentioned, that is Bakugo, who Deku doesn't even really notice yet as he cries, looking at what's happening to All Might. But almost like he senses exactly what's going on, Deku looks over at Yue and he sees Bakugo standing there covered in blood, but standing and holding All Might its card. And in this moment, it's like all of the rain surrounding everyone just completely stops as time almost seems to like freeze. And it's like the calm before the storm, right? You see these pages and you know something is about 
to happen. As we see Bakugo, we cut back to like this symbolism of the trail of hope that All Might has left along his journey in his life. We see Bakugo holding his card, knowing that when Bakugo died, his last thought was, I wish I could have got an autograph on this card. And now All Might is in front of him as someone is threatening him. So it definitely feels like to me that Bakugo is going to go and get that card signed from All Might no matter what. So even if All for One is in his way or whoever is in his way, it's GG. In my opinion, the win condition for the villains was for Bakugo to be down, Bakugo to be out of the count, because it's not too hard for the pair of All for One and Shigaraki to actually wear Deku down. In fact, the best situation probably would have been for Deku to somehow get Shigaraki on his side. But in this situation, where we have a Bakugo who just recently awakened his quirk, just recently got such impressive boosts that he was just speed blitzing Shigaraki at max power, and is now fused with one of the top fastest pro heroes, and we don't even know what that might have done to his quirk or any of his abilities, this is over for the villains. It's GG. If you had any hope in all for one or Shigaraki, just, just put it away. It, it's done. Now that Baku goes out, it's time to put it on the table and take these villains out. And on the last page of the chapter, we see Deku and Bakugo making eye contact with each other, and you just know that in this moment, they said everything that they had to say to each other with just a glance, right? They both agreed who they were going to take care of. Like, I got Shigaraki, you got all for one, let's do this tag team. It's over. It's GG for the villains, and I guess I got to come back next week to see what happens, because there's no break.